In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve the Alex problem called interpreting condensed chemical structures. I have flipped through about 20 to 30 versions of this problem. They all have the same format. The problem gives you a condensed structure and then it asks you to um, count up how many different types of bonds the molecule has. Some of the problems are also going to ask you to count up how many lone pairs the molecule has. I'm going to do three examples of this problem, including an example where we have to count lone pairs. Now, in order to be able to solve this problem, Problem successfully obviously you need to understand what a condensed structure is I'm gonna go through like a, just a really quick review of condensed structures if you need more instruction than this you should probably just start by watching a video on condensed structures so that you can understand them um, this right here what I'm about to do is not intended to be an instruction on how to draw condensed structures. So this, what you're looking at is a Lewis structure. A Lewis structure is one that shows every atom, every bond, every lone pair in the molecule. It shows everything. And they're really bulky and cumbersome. So chemists like to condense this notation down. Condensing the Lewis structure is a condensed structure. And condensing the Lewis structure means that we are going to continue to draw all of the atoms but we are going to not draw at least one of the bonds in the molecule. One of the things that confuses students when they're first learning condensed structures is that they understand like, okay, I'm supposed to not draw one of the bonds. Which bond am I supposed to leave out? There isn't a rule. In condensed notation, you, you leave off whichever bonds you want to leave off. There is no rule. So if I'm condensing this molecule, I'm going to redraw it down here. If I'm condensing the molecule, I get to choose which bond I don't want to draw anymore. And maybe um, the bond that I choose to not draw anymore is gonna be that one right there, this bond that I just drew. This bond I'm gonna choose to not draw. I am still going to draw both the oxygen and the hydrogen atom. We don't get rid of those, we just get rid of the bond. Now, if we get rid of that drawing of the bond, between the oxygen and the hydrogen atom in our notation, what we're gonna do is just scoot those two atoms closer together. And that way we're communicating that they are still bonded to each other. Condensed structures often also um, leave off lone pairs. Again, the purpose of the condensed structure is to try to simplify the drawing. And in condensed structures, it's really common to condense up the carbon hydrogen bonds. So the bonds that connect carbons and hydrogens to each other, we're just a lot of times we're eliminating those bonds entirely and scooting those atoms closer to each other like that. Um, but again, this is kind of this is kind of cumbersome uh, having these hydrogens all just kind of surrounding this carbon. So typically what we'll do is say, oh, let's not waste our time writing hydrogen over and over and over again. Let's just write H3 where that three communicates that we had three total hydrogens at one point like that and this would be a condensed structure of this molecule up here now this the the order in which we write carbon hydrogen clusters in a condensed structure ch3 versus h3c it's really kind of a matter of preference your instructor may prefer to do it one way different instructors prefer to do it different ways some people just don't care what i did notice in this alex problem is that alex seems to like the carbon first followed by hydrogens so in order to make alex happy we would just reverse the order of these just scoot that in like that Look like that. And that would be a format for a condensed notation that would make Alex happy. But it really doesn't matter. Um, technically, it doesn't matter how you choose to write it. They're still communicating the same information. A carbon with three hydrogens attached, a carbon with three hydrogens attached. So again, this here is the condensed notation of that Lewis structure. Now going back to the purpose of the problem, you're gonna be given a condensed structure. You're gonna see some bonds. There are gonna be some bonds that are left off, but ultimately the problem is asking you to count up all of the bonds in the molecule, including the ones that are not being shown in the condensed structure. I think that it's gonna be easiest 
for you to begin this problem by converting it from a condensed structure back to a Lewis structure. So that means we're just kind of starting here and moving in this direction. We're going to be expanding all of those condensed bonds. If you see, I'm going to start from the right hand side of this molecule. If you see two different types of atoms clustered together, two types of atoms like a carbon and a hydrogen clustered together, that's um, communicating to you that they have been condensed. Their bonds have been erased from the structure. What we see here is a carbon that has three hydrogen atoms attached to it and their bonds have been condensed. I'm gonna erase that H3 notation. Instead, I'm gonna draw those three hydrogens out, including their bonds like that, so that I've just drawn it out. The CH3 again means that there's three hydrogen atoms attached to that carbon. Uh, working from right to left, here I see a CH2. This H2 means that there are two hydrogens attached to that carbon right there. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to erase that H2 notation and I'm just going to expand those hydrogen atoms out. And then for our last one, we have this CH3 notation. That H3 means three hydrogens were attached to that carbon. I'm going to erase the H3 notation, and I'm going to draw out those three carbon-hydrogen bonds. Now that I have the Lewis structure, um, it makes it really easy for us to answer these three questions about how many bonds we have. First, how many carbon-carbon single bonds are there? There's one right here and there's another one right there, so that's a total of two. How many carbon-hydrogen single bonds do we have? One, oops, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total. And last but not least, how many carbon-carbon double bonds are there? There's none. We do not have any carbon-carbon double bonds. Don't let that stress you out. Sometimes Alex is going to ask you about a bond that doesn't even exist in the molecule. Let's move on to our next example. So here is the next one that we're working on. And let's just do the same thing. We see, um, for starters, we see this CH3. That H3 notation tells us that there are three hydrogen atoms attached to the, that carbon. So let's draw those three hydrogens and their bonds. Uh, next, we have a CH. That tells us that we have one hydrogen attached to this carbon. So let's draw that out. And you might be asking yourself, um, where should I draw that hydrogen? Does it go up or does it go down? And in this problem, it doesn't matter. Remember, the purpose of this problem is to just count how many bonds there are and how many types of bonds there are. So it doesn't matter where you point them in this problem. You're just drawing them out so that you can count them. Um, and last but not least, we have a CH2. So let's go ahead and erase that H2 and draw the two hydrogen atoms um, onto the, the carbon that. And now we can count up our bonds. How many carbon-carbon single bonds do we have? Just the one. How many carbon-hydrogen single bonds? One, two, three, four, five, six. And how many carbon-carbon double bonds do we have? That one right there, one. Now, last but not least, we have this molecule right here. Let's um, go through and expand it out. We have our CH3 cluster. Let's go ahead and expand the bonds to those three hydrogens. So it's going to look like this. And then we have a carbon all by itself. There isn't another atom out here. That means that we don't need to do any expanding. Like that carbon doesn't have anything else attached to it. Same with this oxygen. If there's not another atom next to it, then it's already expanded out. Um, this NH2, that needs to be expanded. We're looking at an atom different from carbon this time, but we're not going to do anything different. The NH2 notation, that H2 notation, means that there's two hydrogens attached to that nitrogen. Same strategy. We're just going to draw those two hydrogens onto that nitrogen. You uh, may also see, I saw some where you had, uh, in this Alex problem, where they had an OH like that. Same kind of a situation. That's just a hydrogen attached to an oxygen. Now, if you have 
um, a molecule that has oxygen in it or nitrogen in it, those atoms are going to have lone pairs. Now, you might be saying to yourself right now or saying to the screen right now, hey, there are other atoms besides oxygen and nitrogen that have lone pairs. That's true. In this Alex problem, and I looked at many of them, the only examples of atoms with lone pairs were oxygen and nitrogen. I bet. So that's really all that you have to worry about for this particular problem. Oxygen and nitrogen have lone pairs. Oxygen atoms have two lone pairs. Nitrogen atoms have one lone pair. And you might be saying to the screen again, hey, that's not always true. Sometimes oxygen and nitrogen have more or less than two or one lone pairs. Yes, you're right. But for this Alex problem, in this situation, for this problem, we'll put a disclosure on here. Um, for this particular problem, you're only going to see oxygen and nitrogen atoms, and they are going to have this many lone pairs. Oxygen has two, nitrogen has one. For other problems, that's going to vary, um, but we're just worried about this one right now. So our oxygen atom has two lone pairs on it, and our nitrogen atom has one lone pair, and now we can solve this problem. How many carbon-carbon single bonds do we have? just the one. How many carbon-hydrogen single bonds? One, two, three, just three. How many nitrogen-hydrogen single bonds? Two of those. And how many lone pairs? One, two, three, like that. Uh, this problem, or this molecule, also has a carbon-oxygen double bond, and it also has a carbon-nitrogen single bond, but didn't ask us about this. Now, if this is stressing you out, if you don't like this, and you want to know more about what other atoms have lone pairs, what other, in what situations could oxygen have a different number than two lone pairs, hey, I've got a ton of videos on that kind of stuff. You can check that out and learn more about it. Uh, good luck with this problem. Let me know if you have any difficulties.